Well, this is what we're looking to make. Um, I modified it from the bracket. There's a few changes there. You can see I added this boss here so that it adds more strength and rigidity to the very face here and it will also overlap um, some of the areas on the backside, especially here. You know, that'll add uh, another quarter, uh, 0.24, roughly another quarter inch um, of material here to make it even stronger since this is the thinnest point right through here. So uh, that, and when you flip it over, you can see that right over here, you know, I've, I've brought that up. I had clearance there. There wasn't any reason to have it that far down, so I brought that over to help make that stronger. The more material I can keep on here. I'm using a two-inch block, so I figured, why shave it away? There's room behind the rotor in that cavity to build that up, so why not use it? So basically, I'm going to waste about an eighth of an inch shaving off because that's what I'm going to use for the carrier, but otherwise, uh, really, uh, really not much waste. Um, so anyway, let's see that that, and oh, and then this wall here. I thought, why bother cutting it down? It's really not in the way of anything. It it'll be a bit of a challenge to put the bolt in here, but on the 620s, it's threaded, so it's completely not an issue. Um, and I believe I also I also made this flange a little bit thicker um, because I could basically I wanted to try to use up as much of the material as I could. The more you take away, the lighter it is, but the more you leave, the stronger it is. So that's basically uh, I'm looking more for strength than lightweight. Originally, I was going to set it in the mill like this and cut it, and then it was going to basically flip over and fit in the soft jaws. Well, I got to looking at it, and these are my bandsaw cuts okay on the sides they're not exactly parallel but the sides of the extrusion are nice and parallel so I decided to go ahead and do my first cut with the origin over here which will be set into the notch the eighth inch down quarter inch wide notch on the uh, soft jaw and it will cut all of that out so I don't have to worry about prepping the block okay if I tried to do it the other way I would have to prep the block and make these two sides, shave them down and make them parallel uh, and get them just right so they clamp into the vise perfectly. I see no reason why to do it that way over this way. This way uh, just saves uh, an extra step. Uh, it's all going to get shaved off and cleaned up anyway. Uh, it will be cutting some air on the sides because like this particular piece is a hair smaller than the seven and a half inch stock that I've told that it is. And so you can see that I also I also got rid of that, that rise right here, and I shortened this up just a hair. And I did both of those because even though seven and a half goes into 60 inches, evenly you have the kerf width, the cut width of the bandsaw. And so uh, I tried to cut them all as perfectly even, but when I got down to the last two, the last two showed up just a little bit shy. Um, seven and three eighths instead of seven and a half and I was pushing the dimensions you know I only had maybe like 20 thou at each side to get cut off so I went ahead and shortened it up gave myself a little bit more room made it a hair shorter so anyway that's uh, that's some of the changes and then basically we'll step through it here real quick I do have a yellow warning over here what that's telling me is is that I have this modeled as a chamfer tool because that's the only way I could get this to be semi-accurate with the side you know to have my width all the way out here in case I was coming up against something and but then still only have my two inch cutting down here at the bottom if I set it up as a face mill it makes it look like this and it doesn't account for that extra sticking out on the side or it thinks that my cut is more than two inches wide so anyway, that's what the warning is, is it's telling me that the chamfer tool, the selected tool, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to go with it? Yes, I want to go with it. And what I'm going to do is instead of going left and right, because I think I have a bit of nod on the machine, and when I go left and right, I end up with a little ridge between the passes. So I thought, okay, let me try it this way, see what I get. I really shouldn't get any ridges. We'll find out. 
Um, nothing on there has to be absolutely perfectly smooth or anything. That's None of that's a mounting surface, so it's just cosmetics. So I told it to do it at 90 degrees instead of... Uh, I went down and bought a Niagara cutter uh, from the guys at uh, New Tech Industrial on uh, Columbia Boulevard in Portland. It, it's got a two inch flute length, so I can cut all the way down to the bottom. So I can use the full side, the full length of the flute here, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm only doing it with a 50 thou step over because that really seemed to work pretty good on a couple of the other cuts, especially with the 3 ace. And I do have some contour passes at the end in case there is any flex. I'm running this at uh, 6,000 RPMs with two and a half inch per tooth. It's a three flute cutter, it's carbide. It's going to come down and it's going to do the main part first. So it's going to, it's going to cut the outside. Okay. So it's going to cut all that, uh, yeah, I guess I can turn the tool path off there, so make it a little easier to see. Then it'll come back and cut the height of the shelf there. You just can't see it with the way the imaging is. Then it'll come back and cut the boss. So it's working from the bottom up, basically. Which is perfectly fine with me, because that's actually what I want. I don't want to shave all this area down a quarter inch and then have to come back in and take passes again to get here you know and then the outside I want it to take off use the side of the tool and take off as much as it can then it'll step up and anyway I think you get the picture there another adaptive same thing I went ahead and put it in that way so that it'll spiral down and do that's uh, 0.3 and 0.25 Four, you know, so it's just over five and a half, five, just over a half inch. So it'll go down and it'll remove the half inch of material, and then it'll step back up and remove the shallower uh, counter bore there. Okay, so I'm running a point two step over because I'm only cutting off the twenty thou that uh, is left behind from the previous operation. Okay, and I don't have to worry about cutting down the bottom because I had. I have this one set to be, whoops, I have that one set to be uh, like 30 thou below the edge of the model. I'm not sure what the deal is with those step downs. Yeah, I had that before. I think I'm just going to have to live with it on this because I put so much time into tweaking and everything like that that I'm, I'm just going to live with that. It won't take that much time to do that, and if it leaves any marks behind, it's just going to get cleaned up in the contour pass anyway. So, uh, so anyway, we come out of the come out of that. We do contour on the inside bore there. Um, I didn't leave any material on the top one here because I figured with as shallow as it is, there's not and it's doing a fifty thou fifty thou step over. Um. It is doing a 50 thou step over. <laughs> it is now. Uh, there shouldn't be enough deflection to worry about, and it's since it's doing a spiral instead of a some other weird pattern uh, like that, uh, it'll leave a smooth wall, and it's going to be good enough. So we'll clear that up. Then we'll so we'll clean the bottom one up because uh, there could be some deflection there since I'm going to be cutting a half inch, uh, and. I had to do this one separate, and it had to do with the... I had to bring it in at a 45 degree angle instead of 90. Kept saying it was uh, causing a collision. And I guess I could have told them, told this whole thing to do 45 degrees, but I usually have it set at 90, so I just did that other one separate there. But this will be the cleanup pass for all the short walls. And... And here I had to use a sketch projected a sketch so I could put the whole thing because there wasn't any good way to select this line because it would give me all the underside. So the sketch gave me one nice outline there to run all the way around and uh, take that off. So then we switched to the 3 ace drill. Um, it's a stubby drill in an ER ER20 collet holder and I, I figured out how to put the collet holders in the uh, imaging. 
Ah, la 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 la. So it'll drill those three holes. And I did it as a separate thing, and I'm going to use it as the spot drill for these two holes. My spot drill won't reach down there. It's not long enough. So since this is a stubby, I pretty much trust it to be pretty rigid. I'm going to drill that down 100, 150 thou, something like that, to give it a nice pocket for the uh, 12 millimeter drill bit to drop into. And then there's the 12 mil, and the 12 mil is going to be in a chuck, drill chuck, which is pretty dang long. And then it's a full length you know, jobber, I think it's jobber, length uh, drill bit. So, I mean, there's a huge amount of, of length there, which is why I definitely wanted to spot it, and why I made a nice big pocket with that 3 ace. Uh, I should probably just tap it, but the 3 ace is 135 split point and the 12 millimeters 118 uh, if it was the other way around it probably would have been better but uh, this ought to this ought to work just fine if not I'll find out you know and then the chamfer so all the top surfaces here uh, and oh and then I come back and and I come back and do that because I had to do them separate because you can see how close it is down here with where the tip is. I had to change the offsets. And I didn't want to... So I'm down close to the tip when I'm chamfering these. So that's a nice short length. If there's only three of them there. Uh, that's the slower part of the cutter. So I figured rather than beat it up, I'll, I'll separate these out. And this one, I've got it offset so that it does a bigger chamfer, like a 40 thou instead of a 20 thou, and it, uh, its offset is different, so I'm using a, a meatier part of the, the cutter. So I've already pumped the post process out to the mill, now i got to start setting up the tools. 